What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is Not For The Weak Of Heart. You know, we often use the phrase, come as you are, and I've noticed that the older I get, the more I hear this phrase is more so used in a defense of someone correcting another person. So then that really leads the question of what does the phrase mean? What does it mean, come as you are? What is the context? Now, the exact phrase, come as you are, isn't actually in scripture. You won't find that exact phrase anywhere in the Bible. Now, the original message behind the phrase, the original meaning was that you don't try to clean yourself before you get to God because then you'll never get to God because you can never actually clean yourself enough to enter into his holy presence. Now, the purpose of this was originally to fight the deceitful lies of shame. But in the last couple of years, the phrase has been more so distorted and it's lost its original meaning. So then this begs the question of, if this phrase isn't found in scripture, then does the meaning actually hold biblical truth? Well, as I stated earlier, the meaning of the saying is that no matter what you've done, you can always come to God, period. You don't have to clean yourself off first because you can't. Only God can clean you. This idea, I do believe, is in fact biblical. Here's one of the main reasons why. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 11 through 18, it says, And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to this. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. According to the author of the book of Hebrews, no amount of offerings or sacrifices could ever cleanse us from our sins and unrighteousness. But Jesus' perfect sacrifice and offering has made it possible for our sins to be forgiven and for us to be washed clean of all unrighteousness. Here's another example for you. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 through 8 it says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. In other words, you can't clean yourself up. You can't ever do enough good deeds to balance out the bad. You can't ever do enough to make it up to God. Only he can make it right because only he can pay our debt. In our mini series on the cherubim, which you can check out, under our too deep category we went into the meaning behind jesus having bronze feet in revelation chapter 2 verse 18 we explained that jesus having bronze feet meant that anyone could come to him no matter what they had done or where they were in their lives because it was a it was symbolic of the bronze altar located in the tent of meeting that everyone was expected to sacrifice on spoken of in leviticus chapter 1 Now, this is the whole idea of come as you are. You can come to Jesus no matter what you've done, and he will forgive you. The problem is that we don't talk about how we are supposed to now live after we've come to Christ. 
We don't leave the same way we came. We change. Why? Because we are no longer our old selves. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 through 19. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh. We regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. We are no longer bound to sin, for we are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. This is confirmed in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through 24. Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. And to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. We are no longer supposed to live the same way we did before we came to Christ. We are meant to change. We are meant to come as we are and then leave new. We are meant to become a new creation. We are no longer our old selves. Therefore, we fight daily to sin no more. We're fighting for that true righteousness and holiness. So we no longer do the old things that we did. We don't talk the way that we used to talk. We don't watch the same movies we used to watch. We don't listen to the same kind of music we used to listen to. We change. We become more like Christ. And each and every day we fight for a closer walk with God. And the only way we can do that is to change. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 through 2 says, I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your, your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. We are now meant to live our lives wholly pleasing and acceptable to God. That's now our purpose, is to follow in the footsteps of Jesus who did only the will of his Father. First John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life, is not from the Father but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. We can't continue in the same way we came. We have to change. And here's one last verse for you showing that we should never leave the same way we entered. Ezekiel chapter 46 verse 9. When the people of the land come before the Lord at the appointed feast, he who enters by the north gate to worship shall go out by the south gate, and he who enters by the south gate shall go out by the north gate. No one shall return by way of the gate by which he entered, but each shall go out straight ahead. We never leave the same way we entered because we don't go backwards. We always move forward. So just to sum everything up for you guys, the entire meaning of come as you are is that we come just as we are. We don't clean ourselves up before we get to God because we can never actually clean ourselves. So we come just as we are in our sinful manner and God cleans us up. And so we leave different. We change. We don't continue as we came. 
He changes us. He cleanses us. He washes us clean because only his sacrifice can bring the forgiveness of sins. And once we are forgiven, we change. We become a new being in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we crucify our flesh daily and fight to overcome our sins. We do this all through the Holy Spirit and the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ that we might fulfill the will of the Father. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.